Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting, 126, the end of April. Uh, next week, if all goes well, we're releasing the Wix toolset version 3.11. Uh, we'll talk about that at, in a couple slides. As always, these meetings are recorded for those people that are unable to attend with us right here, right now. I just want to have a quick call out to uh, Jacob and John for those guys showing up pretty much every single, every other week um, and providing their feedback and generally helping us make this uh, meeting move along. Do appreciate that very much. All right, moving on. Uh, of course, we're still talking about 3.11 because that's the all-encompassing thing um, outside of all the other things that tips all of our time. Uh, we'll do the triage oh, and pull request review. We'll do that. We'll talk again about the Wix 3.11 release date because if it's going to be all-encompassing, it seems like we should start and end with that. And then, of course, we'll do questions, comments, things that people want to bring up. Hopefully, we're going to start talking about Wix 4 more which is really what we want to talk about. So let's talk about where Wix 3.11 is. Um, last week, or two weeks ago rather, I said it was looking good. That has continued. We're up to 10,000 plus installs of RC2, which is pretty good since it's been out for how long? A month and a half? Is that right? Um, my time's a little bit off. Um, and we're floating around 98% success rate when you factor out cancels, which are the first highest error rate. So, yeah, our, we're looking pretty good. Um, everything else is like a bunch of random one-off type things. Uh, and we're not getting information. Honestly, we get more reports about the Visual Studio extension failing to install than we do Wix, which is, I guess that's a good thing. Um, V311 issues are looking pretty good. We'll look at We'll walk through those. Um, they're basically all assigned to me right now. I don't think we're going to sign anything today to 3.11, but we'll walk through that. And then we'll do pull request review because we reviewed them last week, but they didn't change, and there's more to talk about. So we're going to go do that right here, right now. Bob, you ready? I'm ready. All right. So we'll do issues first to see if anything ends up adding in 3.11. Um, Wix repairs, prerequisite.net package. Um, this feels like a... a um, dupe. I thought we've talked about this before. Um, Doesn't ring a bell, but... Well, I've, okay, we at least talked about not repairing well, the .NET project sorry. in the past. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've talked about never repairing. Never repairing. Sorry. Not, not just um, in the context of the Wix installer. Yeah. Just so. because it's, you know, a very heavyweight repair. that our code is kind of busted. Um, so that's kind of an interesting thing. Um, these actually sent a pull request for this. Let's talk about this one in the pull request, and we'll come back to that issue. Works. Um, no, let me, we'll stay here. So if this guy provided a fix for it, would we take it in 3.11? At this point, I would vote no. Yeah, it's just not big enough thing, and we'll just take it 314 to kind of wrap up the end of that. Yeah, yeah. All right. We're not going to take this. Okay, but we could keep it open or move the milestone to 314. We should create that milestone, by the way. All right. I think I did. Oh, you did. Great. Then we'll have somewhere to put it. Type libs cannot be repeated for both 32-bit and 64-bit. Um, yes. I think we've been talking about this, Bob. Like, mm -hmm. completely different context. Yes. This is because the and we, as we talked about it, Bob and I noticed, or Bob noticed, we were talking about it somewhere else, that if you have a 32-bit component, a 64-bit component, the generated reg identifiers do not take in the 64-bit and 32-bit split um, into the calculation of the uh, ID, and thus you hit problems like this, which is busted. So we should take into account the uh, platform um, when we generate this ID. But doing so would then change all of the IDs for everything that's already out there, which means we can't take it in um, 3x. So I think we're taking this in 4. But we should definitely do this in 4. Yeah, no, definitely. Sean was going to say something. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Profound. 
Uh, Wix toolset build tools must be installed to build the project after applying update. Right. This is awesome. So we have some people installing the Visual Studio 2015 extension on top of Wix 3.10, which of course is not necessary because Wix 3.10 contains the Visual Studio extension. Everything works out fine, except you now get these templates from the Visual Studio 2015 extension that, as we all know, have been slowly massaged into place to handle the breaking changes in MS Build 15 as best we can. Um, and in trying to solve all those problems, we've now made it so those templates do not work with pre-311 um, Wix toolset. Um, so as I pointed out down here, the solution, I thought I put down here, holy cow, does this guy paste his login? Yeah, yeah. whatever. There's the ability to attach, which works just fine. Anyway, so I have two options. Don't install the Visual Studio 2015 extension on 3.10 or upgrade to 3.11. Um, and then I closed this, but then I didn't put a tag on it because um, I wanted to talk about it here. Um, I think we probably should improve the message for the templates that you need 3.11 or better if you're going to use those templates. Um, Well, the problem, well, so in response to Jacob, maybe we should block the extension if you don't have 3.11 installed, except... We can't. And also, it's, well, yeah, right. There's no no custom actions in a V6, which there's is no, mostly a good thing. There's no mechanism by which we could do what you suggest. It would be interesting, but can't do it. And besides, I think it's actually interesting to have the V6 installed without the build tools. Um, yeah, if you just want to be able to load the projects and not build them, right? you won't get errors in the solution man build manager and all that kind of stuff, but you can mark the solutions to not build and those people won't build them and everything works great. Or put them in a different solution configuration so they only build when you build this configuration. Anyway, so I think there's advantages being able to install it. I think there's a temporary problem as we move forward to 3.11. I think this will slowly go away. Um, well, and it is just a problem with the templates. Yes. Right? Yes. It's just that that check that that we're doing in the templates now. Yes. I'm I'm personally okay with. Uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't like that it's it's not terribly actionable, but I don't know that it's worthwhile to you know to try to dig in and provide you know a more precise error message. Well, the error message is on our side, so we can change it without too much effort. I mean, yeah. Well, I'm just, I, I'm, I guess I'm making it better could be, you know, kind of annoying, kind of annoyingly complex. You know, what do we want to, what do we want to say? You know. Well, we could change it from three to three eleven, or better. That way, the template would tell you, hey, you need three eleven or better if you're going to use this template. Hmm. Okay. So I, I think that's the I, I was imagining that we'd have to actually, like, you know, go try to determine which version is installed. But, yeah, if, if it's just, if you use these templates, you must use 3.11. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, if you hit this error message, that means you do not have 3.11 or better installed. Because if you had 3.11 installed, you would not hit this error message. That's basically what but it is. But if, if you have 2015, 3.10.3, and a template... Uh, or sorry, a project based on a on a three ten three template, you're not going to hit this message, and and everything's going to work. Correct. But not yeah, okay. Not in Visual Studio 2017, but yeah. <laughs> yes. What happens in 2017? You won't have the the hops necessarily, so it won't be able to MS Build won't necessarily find your MS Build project in all cases. Thus, you need the new template. I mean, that's why you need these new templates. These new templates add the stuff yeah. that make it work in MS Build 15. And add the check. And also add the check so yeah. that you, it tells you what you need to do when you hit the situation. Right, right. Because it's easier to hit the situation than ever before. Yeah. Thank you, MS Build. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this whole thing is really complicated, so it's just, it's really painful. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I guess I'd, I'd vote in favor of, Updating the message. All right. 
then maybe we can reopen this, toss it at me, and toss it at 311, because it's going to be a pretty okay. simple change. But it's annoying only because uh, the error message is in all the templates, and there's no sharing, so you have to go and add, you know, tweak the message and make sure you get it corrected. And thank goodness for source control, so I can diff everything and see it. Custom action fails. Cabinet error code 1. So they're trying to call a managed code custom action, and it's failing. Cabinet error code one. Hmm. I really would have preferred line breaks. Yeah, failed to extract a temporary directory, cabinet error code one. Cool. So I want to go look at that. I guess we're going to put it in 4, right? And someone can look at it at some point. 4x? Yeah, that makes sense. Yep, cool. Um, Burn should allow BA to provide an update feed source. Yes, in the same place Bob and I were talking about this. And I was a little beside myself. Jacob? Yeah, I thought <laughs> there was a system request in 4x. I thought there was one out there to create a modified thing. Oh, I completely missed that. Oh, it only came in 39 seconds ago. All right, that's why I missed it. So, no, I think the, the requirement here is that we can update, that the BA can override the update source. That's the requirement. Like, like you can change the download source for a... a um, payload or a container. Yeah, I'm fine if you have to put some source in there, but the the thing is to be able to update it. So you could put foo in there or some other token. As long as you have the token, then you'll get this callback. If you don't have the you know token, then you don't have to call back. I think that's fine. That behavior is all right. The, the, the unfortunate behavior is that you can't change that your own. So yeah, so I th this is a four thing, so we can dupe it to that other issue. Um, Jacob, if you can get that to Bob, that'd be awesome. Would we allow direct modification? We it's, we should do it the same way we do download sources. Um, we should require them to make a update source call during the callback, which then should set the statement that says, you know, do this. Whatever. Yeah, that's that's the approach I'm taking. Um, right. Since it it matches the you know, the set download source. Yeah, I think it should be yeah um, parallel, congruent, um, whatever. Consistent. Thank you. There's the word, <laughs> Sean, coming from the back of the room. There it is. So yeah, that in four because hey, breaking changes go in four. As sad as it would be to have, nice as it would be to have in three. Cool. I think we're done with um, 3.11 stuff. I'm going to jump to the pull requests. Um, <clears throat> so we have these two RU extensions, uh, or these two util extension languages, I'm reading the screen here, um, that I think we said we would move over to help these guys, you know, since they did the localization. So they need to move to 4, because that's where we're going to take them. Um, and then we have the guy proposing the prevent repairing .NET prerequisite package. Um, which I think we said we're not taking at this point, so we would toss this in 3.4, in 3.14. There was no 3.4. Right? Did I do that correctly? I think that's correct. Hmm. Coolness. This is that problem with the magic variables. Yeah. No, exactly right. That that magic variable... Actually, the other reason I'm I'm... I kind of don't want to take this in addition to unnecessary churn is it's not that, that magic variable name looks like it should mean something. Um, but I'm kind of like, well, but maybe it's just coincidental that it looks like it's so close to the other, uh, like the, the one right next to it 
Wix MBA prereq package ID. Yeah. Um, cool. I, this sounds like a great thing to go take in 3.14. So yeah. 3.14, we'll, we'll discuss it there. All right. So that leaves us with 3.11 things. I refresh. I expect I have a new one. Yay, look. Rob has all five issues. Actually, I think Brian said he's going to do this towards the end of this month, so he has a few more days. Uh, but that's a web update, so I don't think that's a big deal. That we were discussing on Wix devs to make it a little clearer. Um, all of these issues are related to basically the C++ custom action template and then cleaning up all the templates around them. Um, I am I have cleared my schedule <laughs> to do the C++ custom action today, tomorrow, so this will be happening uh, now. It, I just need to get it done. I've just been so busy. Not a chance to get this. So that will be going away. I'm hoping there's not little to no change inside the core tool set, although I think there may be something to lay out the lib files in a way that makes the custom action templates not horrible the way they are today. And then we will be some tweaks inside the extension, which in the future we can take vote of changes whenever we choose to take vote of changes, because they generally, like these outside of the C++ custom action template, do not require changes in the core tool set. So we can continue to tweak the templates and generally make them better. Um, independent of the Wix tool set, the core tool set. So all of these will be going away this week. And I expect they're all very small changes to the core tool set um, for the final release, if any. Cool? Everybody's kind of like, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, whatever. <laughs> <sighs> Moving on then to the, everybody's like, whatever, Rob has all the work. <laughs> so this matter. works for me this works for me because hey Rob has all the work um, so I think we're still on track for Cinco de Mayo in the, I, the if there's any changes they're going to be small and just have some of you guys like kick the tires a little bit maybe get John uh, to run it through real quick if Phil's around it'd be great if he could kick it around um, and then have maybe uh, Bob and um, Sean just try to create a C++ custom action that builds and I think that'll probably be be enough where we can have a build you know, out there and just kind of make it available and then promote it to our TM. That's my thinking. Because I really don't expect the changes to be at all interesting. There won't be anything in the code that changes. It'll just be maybe some files copied to additional locations. Sounds good. All right. This, of course, is predicated on me getting this work done in the next few days. So that is why I have cleared my schedule. I've, I'd say I've postponed it as long as possible. That's not actually what happened. It's just been so busy. Now I just have to start pushing other things. So, where's 3.11? We're pushing for the end, just a couple templates at the end, and then we will carry on. Other things people want to talk about. Uh, 3.11 or other stuff out there. I think Jacob said he had something from the beginning of the meeting. Other things going on. Would anybody be opposed to adding a git bundle metadata MS build task in MS build? And what would that do? Set properties in MS build? Like the version number and I don't know, what else would you get from the bundle? I, I'm not generally against it. I'm just curious what you're thinking it would do. Oh, and the bundle ID. Interesting. Why do you need the bundle ID? I don't know. I guess you could, but I think the version would probably yeah. be more useful. Oh, the ge generated feed. Yeah, okay. Sure. Also okay. handy if you want to, for some reason, track the uh, uh, you know, track it in the registry because that's how you have to look it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm 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 good with that. Seems reasonable. Um. Yeah. Wix tasks. Place like that. Cool. Uh. Probably. I don't know. Probably a small web. Probably useful for that just to document what it does, and then we won't have to worry about documenting as much in the future. Or at least we'll have most of the text, hopefully, if we put it on the web page, um, where we document the Wix build tasks. So anything else people want to talk about? Stuff going on, stuff people doing. Wix 3.11, finish that. Then I want to get our 3.14 in a row and then move on to 4.0, because 3.14 is basically a support release for three for 4.0. Mm, that's interesting. Yep. All right. 
Cool. Anything else? Other things people want to talk about? Stuff going on? Going, going, gone. John keeps typing. I maybe give him a second. No, racing to the end on my end. Yep. <clears throat> cool. Uh, you guys are welcome to follow up with that on Wix devs or after the meeting if you'd like to sit around. But um, if you have a sure. link, you guys can chat about that. Um, and we'll go on from there. So I guess until next week, you guys all take it easy and hopefully we'll have a Wix 3.11, sorry, two weeks, um, Wix 3.11 build out for you. That's like RTM and we'll have a party or something like that. You know, bring your own beer kind of thing. So on and so forth. Anyway, two weeks later. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.